Hello everyone, thanks for joining us in our session today. My name is Vamshi Kondori and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect for Robotics and Amazon Web Services. Today, we are going to talk about how to create simulation worlds at scale with AWS Robomaker Worldforge. During this session, we'll be going over a quick overview of what simulation is, what, why it's needed, and what AWS Robomaker Worldforge does to help it. We will also be going through a fun part of demonstrating this capability with my colleague, Sam Gundry. He's going to show you how to create a template that acts as the basis for creating these Worldforge worlds. And once the worlds are generated, how you can export them in case you want to use this world in your local development environment outside AWS. At the end, we'll also be touching upon a few open source tools that are available that can help you create the 2D maps from these gazebo worlds, which can play an important part in helping you create the tests that you require for your simulation. Why simulation? Simulation is a powerful tool to speed up development and improve the quality of robotics applications. The following scenarios are a few in which simulation can play a vital role. The first one is testing. Simulations enable to test the robots in a multitude of environments and scenarios in simulation. Having the ability to test in different scenarios, changing the parameters and environments enables you to test your application more robustly, thereby having a higher confidence when you deploy the application on a real robot. Machine learning training. Simulation has the ability to have a real-time factor of greater than one. This means that your machine learning training can happen quicker than if done with a real physical robot's data. Also, AWS RoboMaker simulations has the ability to give run simulations concurrently. This means that you can run your machine learning training in parallel, thereby decreasing the time which is required to train your models. Synthetic data generation. Because we are able to change the environments, the lighting conditions, the scenarios, and the objects around the robot, we are able to generate a more cost-effective and a significantly richer data set that is required for your machine learning algorithms. And we've seen our customers consistently use simulation for these use cases. However, with simulation in these scenarios, you will require a large amount of variation in the simulation worlds for this to be effective. You can see it with testing, where you need require a large number of environments, objects, scenarios, and variation in parameters so that your robot is being tested in different environments more robustly. For machine learning training and synthetic data generation, having a large variation in the worlds and the ability to change the parameters within these worlds is what is required to create the rich data set that you need to train your models. And with a large number of worlds, the cost per image for the synthetic data or label data is significantly lower than a manual method of human labeling. As you can see, it's all about scale. Apart from scale, variety of simulation worlds is a big part of solving this problem successfully. You can see that if you've ever tried to create a 3D world, creating simulation worlds can be pretty difficult. It usually requires specialized skills such as 3D model editors and game designers to actually build these environments. And if you have to create variety from these simulation worlds, you can see how this can get more complicated with the more number of worlds that you want to generate. Creating simulation worlds is time consuming and can sometimes take up to weeks or months depending on the complexity of the world that you want to create. And this time increases with the number of worlds. On top of this, because of the skills that is required and the amount of time that goes into it, simulation worlds can be pretty expensive to actually build, sometimes of the order of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. And to create the variety that we need can cost a fortune. 
and that is what AWS RoboMaker's WorldForge functionality tries to solve. With AWS WorldForge, you will be able to create a multitude of residential environments with a single API call and generate all the variety that you need to run your simulations successfully. With WorldForge, you will be getting out of the box 3D assets such as your chairs, furniture, floors, walls, etc. that will enable you to create the variety that you need in simulation worlds. You can generate a world within minutes with a single API call as opposed to what we've seen of days or weeks with a high dollar amount associated with it. These worlds are pretty inexpensive with AWS WorldForge. It costs just a dollar fifty cents to create one single world and five dollars to export it and use it on your local machine. This is a huge difference as compared to having spending weeks of effort or thousands of dollars in generating a simulation world. And on top of this, you can create hundreds of worlds in within minutes and you can do them concurrently with our managed service. AWS RoboMaker will take care of running, creating these worlds concurrently and in parallel so that you don't have to worry anything about managing that. And all of this is fully integrated with RoboMaker simulations. RoboMaker provides first class support with the worlds generated from the WorldForge functionality and you can just import your WorldForge world into your application with a single click or a simple change in your API. Now with that, let's actually hear from Sam Gundry who will walk you through how to generate these WorldForge worlds and demo this capability. Hi, I'm Sam Gundry, an engineer with RoboMaker. Today, we're going to do a deep dive and a demo of WorldForge. Afterwards, we'll look at WorldForge under the hood, how it's being implemented. AWS RoboMaker WorldForge is based on templates. The templates are JSON. We have an interactive template editor in the AWS console. You can use the console to create and customize your, your worlds and then easily generate tens and hundreds of worlds. It's integrated first class with AWS RoboMaker simulation and the worlds are fully physical. Today, I'll walk you through a demo of editing templates, generating worlds, running in RoboMaker simulation. Let's get started. So here we are. Here's the AWS RoboMaker WorldForge uh, console. We're going to create a template and then generate worlds. Out of the box, WorldForge provides four sample templates. We're going to use those to create worlds in, uh, in our first demo, and then we'll come back and go into detail. You can also start from scratch. Here we are, we're going to select the living and dining room to sample template. It's two rooms. We click start and that puts us into the world template editor. This is where you, we will edit interactively, customize our worlds. But first, let's generate some worlds. Okay, so first, let's, we can just request one world to start with. This will create a generation job. The WorldForge is now generating your 3D physical simulation world. In a few moments, we'll speed ahead and you can see the world will complete. And there it is. It's our first world for the day. We can click through to the world detail page. Note, it has two rooms. It has the living room and dining room that we asked for in our template, but it looks different to the sample template image. The layout looks a little bit different. The meshes in the floors, uh, the textures in the floors and the walls look, look different. And the furniture, the furniture has the same types, but you can see here, they're laid out differently. And this is the real power and magic of WorldForge. From that one template, in as few as four clicks, we can generate a fully 3D world for simulation. Okay, now let's go back to the world template editor. We're going to customize our world today. We click through and jump into the editor. 
As you can see, the editor has two parts to the view. We can see the rooms in the cards on the top and then the fields on the bottom for editing. We can also name our template. We're going to name these templates so our QA engineers can easily come back and look for templates to generate more worlds. We're going to add four more rooms to this to make it a six room house. The floor plan has a dimensions. Now the dimensions can control the aspect, the shape of a floor plan. Now it's a desired aspect ratio because it's not guaranteed, it's a preference. You're giving a preference to WorldForge to use that to uh, give guidance to the shape of the world. Now, instead of square, we're going to make it wide, so a three to one ratio, and we set the ceiling height to 2.4 metres. <clears throat> now we can start adding our rooms. Here's our rooms list. We can view the cards on top, and we can also edit rooms. <clears throat> The desired area is similar to the desired aspect ratio. For a room, it's a guidance, a suggestion. We will randomly generate worlds close to your desired area. So we create a bigger living room, 45 square meters and a wider living room. Next, we'll start adding some rooms. We can name our rooms for refer referencing later in gazebo and in the template. We are adding a bedroom. We choose the bedroom type, we specify its desired area and its desired aspect ratio. Next, we'll add a bathroom. WorldForge provides seven room types. These room types affect where they are in the floor plan layout and later, as you will see, in what materials are assigned and what furniture is populated. Next, we're adding a kitchen. We'll make that larger and we'll make that a little bit lot wider. So as you can see, we're building up this floor plan from two rooms out of the box sample template to adding four custom rooms. We're going to create a hallway and we're going to use the maximum uh, aspect ratio. So it's long and narrow. And there you have, there are six rooms, the list of rooms is there, but now we wanna actually have some custom on where they are laid out in the world. So this is what connections are for. Connections give us a preference for a room adjacent to another room. There are two types of connections. There's an opening and a doorway. I'll show you both now. The first connection we're using is an opening. An opening means two rooms will be adjacent, but there will be no wall. They'll, sh they'll share a space like an open plan. So in our template, we're asking WorldForge to put the dining room next to the kitchen without a wall. Next, we're, creating a, we're asking for a doorway between the living room and bedroom. A doorway means there will be a wall, there's a shared wall, with a gap the width of the door. Similarly, we're going to add a doorway between the living room and bathroom. And there you have it. We've got a six room floor plan. It's updated in the top. You can see the living rooms connected to the bedroom and the bathroom via a doorway. You can see the dining room it has an opening through to the kitchen. So that's the floor plan, that's the layout. Next, we're going to look at decorating the interior. So you can decorate the interior by different materials on the floor and the walls. You can also add furniture types. Out of the box, we'll do, that, we'll do this for you. Uh, by default, we'll assign random types based on random materials and random furniture based on the room types. However, we can also override these and customize. We may want to do this to test the robot physics or test the robot's object detection. In this example, I'm going to add wood floors to some rooms. You can add room, you can add floors and materials to room types or by room names. You can see here, any dining room, any hallway, any uh, kitchen and living room are going to get our wood floors. We're assigning parquetry and floorboards. You can see the thumbnails there. Out of the box, WorldForge provides flooring materials and wall materials. Now we're going to add some custom walls. Just like floors, we can override their materials. Instead of doing it by room type, I'm going to assign it to a particular room. We're going to add wallpaper and brick walls to our bedroom and to our kitchen. We're selecting those, those rooms by name. And then we add some custom materials. Similar to the floor, here are some materials for walls that are, that are specific for walls and there's the thumbnails. You can see the bricks and the wallpaper. 
And now we're going to add some custom furniture. We can specify an empty room or override custom furniture in any one room. We, do, we might do this because we want to test the robot in a, in a challenging situation. Today, we're going to test the robot in a hallway with just storage benches and buffets. For instance, our robot may not be able to navigate between the buffet legs, or it may not be able to detect the storage benches. So here we go, we are choosing, the choosing our furniture based on type. Out of the box, WorldForge provides hundreds of assets. We're going to check, choose sideboards and buffets, and there are the thumbnails. There are some of the samples that you will get when you generate a random world. And now we're going to choose these benches, the storage benches. Yep, there it is. And as you can see, we have some benches. And that's it. We've gone from a two room sample template to a six room house. We've overridden the flooring and, and the wall materials and we've added some custom furniture. This template can now be used to generate any number of worlds you want. The card views have been updated. We can quickly inspect the hallway, as I said, has side boards and buffets. The kitchen has wallpaper and bricks. And now we can generate worlds. And this is really powerful, this moment. We are taking a template and we're generating up to 50 worlds in one request. Now, we can, we can ask for a number of floor plans. So if we ask for five floor plans, we can then ask for a different world per floor plan. For instance, we're going to ask for five and then three interiors per floor plan. What this means is for every floor plan, we'll get three different worlds. So a total of 15 worlds. And we're going to generate these worlds now. We've submitted the request to WorldForge and now we have a generation job. The jobs page which will stream worlds in as they complete. Once a world completes, you can then use this for simulation. Jumping forward time a little bit and the first five worlds are completed. As you can see, there are several different floor plans. The, the world, the dimensions is now long and elongated according to our template parameters. The hallway in the center there has only storage benches and buffets like we requested. And this is the power of templates. You can specify preferences, but we will randomly generate worlds according to those preferences. Fast forwarding time a little bit more and we'll see the next few worlds come in. Yep, five more worlds, again, different floor plans. And when we finish, with, when the job completes, we'll have five different floor plans, each of those with three different interiors. Jumping forward a little bit more, and there we go, the job's complete. We've got 15 worlds. Uh, uh, after clicking through, easily creating a template, and in a matter of tens of minutes, we have a new world. You can search and filter worlds, and you can label worlds via tags so your QA engineer can easily search for worlds for their specific scenarios. You can jump into a world details and view its large preview and have a better inspection. As you can see, this is another world where the hallway has just benches and buffets and a different floor plan layout. So this is powerful, but even more powerful, you can create different templates for a more diverse, more set of worlds. We're going to go through and generate worlds for each of our sample templates. First, we're going to select the single room template. It's a bedroom. Out of the box, we can click through, generate worlds without any changes. We're going to ask for two floor plans. So that's a single room. The room might be a different shape, a different size. Next, we're going to use the living room and dining room template and generate two more worlds. As we're doing this, we're creating these templates in our account that we can come back to and regenerate later. Next, we're going to use the apartment sample template. It's a four room open plan uh, house. And again, we're going to generate two more worlds. Lastly, we'll use the, font, the fourth uh, template. It's a small house, it has six rooms. It's a larger uh, space and we'll just generate one world for this. Now we're doing this because we can see the variety of templates just in just a matter of a few clicks. The jobs are all running, the four generation jobs were requested, and you'll see the world speeding up time a little bit, and you see the world's complete. We have four completed, we'll see another two complete, and then finally we'll get seven worlds completed. 
And there it is. We have seven new worlds. This is our worlds page, and you can see the different floor plans, the two different bedrooms, the beds in a different place, and all the other sample templates have easily generated all these worlds. There's a huge amount of variety to test your robots, test and train your robots. So next, we've got all these worlds, but really we're doing this so we can simulate. And RoboMaker WorldForge is integrated first class with RoboMaker Simulation. We're creating a new simulation job for Ross Malik. We support all the software that RoboMaker Simulation supports. We're going to skip a robot application for the demo, and we're going to use the Hello World GitHub sample application. It has been updated to support WorldForge Worlds out of the box. I couldn't resist We're creating a new simulation application and it's Hello World Forge. As I mentioned, the software suites are all supported and the launch file, uh, is we have a new launch file in the GitHub repository that'll let you load Worlds out of the box. And now we select which world to create the simulation job with. We browse and we can select with a preview thumbnail. This lets you confirm the world you want to load uh, before creating the job. These are, the, as you can tell, these are the worlds we created just before. There's the single bedroom. And now we're going to choose one of the two uh, room houses. And that's it. In a matter of clicks, uh, full integration, you can create a job. RoboMaker will import your world into a simulation environment. Jumping forward a little bit, here's the job that started. We're opening the Gazebo Client GUI tool. And there's the world. There's our house, the two rooms. As you can see, WorldForge's assets have been loaded. There's the floorboards. There's the wallpaper. And there's a robot in, in the dining room. WorldForge guarantees that the default position in Gazebo 000 is always clear. That means you can start your robot in any simulation world without worrying about colliding with furniture. We're going to show you the robot's point of view now. This is the camera on the robot running. It's on the camera topic and this is via ROS. As you can see, the robot can see the floorboards, it can see the assets. We're going to steer the robot through the world. This demonstrates the physics of Gazebo, uh, physics of Gazebo and the physics of WorldForge. We're driving along the floorboards. We can collide with any of those assets. And we can challenge our robot. We can test and train our robot in all these random different environments. Next, I'll show you what this looks like to the physics. In Gazebo, we're going to enable the collision meshes. These are the orange renders. This is what the physics engine sees when it collides different objects. This is the mesh of the collision objects. You can see the turtle bot, the robot, has a high, high fidelity mesh, but, and the, so do our assets. You can see the orange mesh in our world provided by WorldForge. And there you go. There, in a matter of a few clicks, we've created 20 to 25 worlds. We've imported those into simulation, and we have a physical simulator running with our robot. Next, I'll show you how you can export a world so you can run with it locally. We create an export job, we choose our world. This will upload a .zip file into your S3 bucket. The .zip file is a ROS workspace. It's compatible with ROS1 and ROS2. You can download this .zip file into your workspace and then continue and running simulations locally. For instance, here I've downloaded the zip file into the Hello World GitHub sample application. And it has its gazebo.world file. It has a nested model, so you can use the WorldForge world in your world, in your own dot worlds. And here are the assets, the models, the furniture models. You can then build and run, lo run lo locally with ROS launch. It's as easy as that. And there you go. There's one of the worlds we generated earlier in Gazebo. So far, we have seen how you can generate multiple 3D worlds with AWS RoboMaker WorldForge with just a few clicks on the RoboMaker console page. We've also seen how you can create an export job so that your zip file with the 
World pa ROS packages are available on the designated S3 location. I'm going to continue from where we left off and show you how you can use download the zip file of these ROS packages and run it on your local system. I'll also be touching upon a few open source tools that are available to create 2D maps from these 3D worlds so that you can use them for your navigation tests or elsewhere. Here I have a zip file that I've downloaded from my S3 bucket and an empty workspace which I will be using to demonstrate this capability. So first I'll start off by extracting my zip file into my ROS workspace. As you can see, I'm using an Ubuntu 1804 machine with ROS Melodic installed for this demonstration. AWS Robomaker provides the worlds in fully compatible ROS packages. So all you have to do to use it in your ROS workspace is copy the files onto your source directory, like what we've done just now, and build it. And that's it. At this point, I am good to launch my gazebo world that we've just generated. And I will launch the corresponding WorldForge file, which is present in AWS Robomaker WorldForge Worlds ROS packages, ROS package with the launch world.launch launch file. I will set the GUI argument to be true so that we can visualize the world in GZ client. And here we are. You can see the world that we've exported from AWS WorldForge available on my local machine. And with this, we can run our application locally, have a robot set up over here with both the robot and simulation application and do our local development. Next, we will see how you can use some open source tools that are available to generate 2D maps from these 3D worlds. Our sample application on GitHub actually goes through this process step by step and provides some tools around it. But at the heart of it, we use this repository that provides a plugin that enables us to generate the 2D map. This plugin has been derived from the work of ETH Zurich University students, which you can see from the readme over here, started off from an Octomap plugin that generates a 3D map for a gazebo world. So for our use case, we are going to go ahead and clone this repository into our workspace. We will need to switch to a different branch because we've made a few changes to make it compatible with AWS RoboMaker WorldForge Worlds. And we will go ahead and build our ROS packages, which will actually provide us the plugin that we need to attach to our world. While this is building, we can see from the documentation over here that to actually create the map, we will need to add these lines in between the world tags of our dot world file that describes the 3D world. Once we attach this plugin and launch our world, it will provide us with a service call called generate map which creates a map on the topic Map2D. So let's go ahead and modify our .world file so that we can add these lines. As mentioned in the documentation, I'm gonna go ahead and add the lines 
in between the world tags. You will notice here that we have arguments that define the kind of map and the properties of the map that we want to generate. Here the map resolution is 0.1 meters, which is 10 centimeters per pixel. And height of the map is 0.3 meters from the ground. I use the turtle bot in my demonstration. So I'm going to leave the height as 0.3 because that's around the height at which the LiDAR is present. I know from experience that the map generated will require a bigger size. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size to 25 meters. And because we've edited the world file, we need to build it again so that it will be picked up by our ROS launch command. And that's it. At this point, we source our local environment like we've done before and launch our world with the launch command that we've used earlier. As we've seen earlier, we have the world available over here. But this time, because we've attached the plugin to our world file, we now have a new service call that is available for us to generate the map. You can notice here that we actually do not have anything published on the map 2D topic yet because we haven't actually called the service call. So let me go ahead and make the service call by using the command ROS service call. And that's it. Our map is now available on the slash map 2D ROS topic, which we can verify with the ROS topic echo of the command map 2D topic. There you go. We can visualize our map using Arvis by subscribing to the topic map 2D. You will notice over here our map that is generated at 0.3 meters height from the floor. You can change the parameters to get different heights of the map corresponding to the LiDAR height of your specific robot. And finally, now that the map is available, you can use the ROS run map server map saver tool to save the map to a file. In this case, we will have to remap the slash map topic to slash map 2D because by default, this tool will be looking for the map topic. And that's it. You will notice after running the tool, we have two files available in the location where we've run it from. And if we open the map.pgm file, you will notice the map that we generated, which was also viewed through Arvis just now. This way, you can create the map either at runtime or prior and set up your navigation tests in case you don't want to run your robot and virtually build the map by joysticking around it. This map can also serve as a ground truth in case you run your own mapping algorithm to create a map and can compare against this specific one. Thank you for watching. Now, from these demonstrations, we can see that creating the simulation worlds is no longer hard, but significantly easier. They are also much faster where within the order of minutes, you'll be able to generate tens, if not hundreds of worlds with a single API call. And finally, all these words are available to you for your simulations at a significant cost savings and much cheaper so that you can run your simulations at scale and have high confidence in the applications that you've built.
here are a few references for the open source tools that were mentioned in the demo. Thank you for watching.